So help me welcome Reverend John Scott to the podium. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. This is Taylor's birthday. Good morning, family. Good morning, family. I want you to laugh for truth. So, you, you know, Tuesday is International Happiness Day. And a few years ago, we hosted the Jamaican um, Happiness Club. They were called, ooh, let me see, the Laughter Club of Jamaica. And they taught us a laughter exercise, which I want to remind you of. Would you all please stand? And I want you to put your hands on your hips. If those that have hips. <laughs> Further down, Tony. <laughs> and I want you to bend forward and back constantly as you say, ha, 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 ha,
with the foreman ranting and railing at him. And he was the one who had warned about, you know, warned about the danger. Um, he, he said, well, why me? I'm the one that tried to prevent the disaster. So anyhow, as he was telling the psychiatrist about this incident, the psychiatrist, against all of your training as a counselor and as a, you know, a professional, was trying not to smile. So you know, he's biting the inside of his cheeks and saying, no, don't smile, don't smile. You know, when you try not to laugh, especially in church, what happens? You, you start to bust a laugh and can't eat. So he, start, he couldn't help himself and the psychiatrist started to smile. And what happened was the patient, seeing it, also started to smile. And before you know what, he bust out a laugh. And the two of them just roared at the mental picture of this avalanche of cookies all over the factory floor. You know, and the, the supervisor standing waist deep in cookies and swearing at the, at the, at the unfortunate worker. That laughter together began the patient's healing because, because the nature of the relationship between psychiatrist and patient changed from just you lie on the couch and tell me your tales of woe to a real empathetic kind of relationship. And the guy began to look around for another job. He, in fact, got himself into training at something that upgraded his skills and eventually got a, a job that was more compatible with his, his, his wishes and his dream of a better life. So um, it, it just so happens that when you laugh together, something happens, it bonds you and it enables you to look at the brighter side of life. I think about it when I go down to the general penitentiary on a Tuesday because you know, there is not much to smile about in there. And yet still in our classes, there is great laughter, there is great joy, there is great just, just happiness at being able to be together and to share our common humanity and to acknowledge that, yes, we are human, while Reverend Michael and I try to also give, impart the idea that we're also um, divine. So learning and growing all, always makes us feel good about ourselves, doesn't it? And if you have noticed, or have you noticed, those of you that have been to Santa Man classes, that at a class you begin to feel a kind of a, a bond with your classmates, and it generates a great happiness. If you, if you haven't been to a class, I want to recommend that you, you drop in on even one and experience the camaraderie and the joy of learning in sync with other people who are of like mind and also searching for the truth. Um, that is the foundation of, of this, this Center for Spiritual Living. In the book, Ask and It Is Given, Learning to Manifest Your Desires, written by Esther and Jerry Hicks, they give two surefire ways of understanding this vibrational energy that happens when you are happy, when you are joyful. I prefer the word joy to happiness because happiness kind of, for me, is a... Is a in response to something that happens. But joy just comes from your center and bubbles up. You, you can be in a sad situation and still joyful. You know, you can experience the loss of a loved one. And of course there is the, the grief and the tears, but underneath it is an underlying joy at having known the person, the joy at having, at having been able to minister to them. Um, that happens to me all the time when I am dealing with people who are about to make the transition. I, I, I acknowledge the the human side, but I also just am so grateful and so joyful that I have been blessed to be able to share those, those absolutely amazing last moments with, with, with somebody who is going or with the family that remains behind. So the Hicks maintain that there is nothing more important for us than feeling good. And so they recommend that we do two things. One, pay attention to what you are experiencing because what you are demonstrating in your life always matches what you are focused upon. Hear me. What you are demonstrating in your life, the occurrences in your life right now, are an indication of what your focus is upon. And secondly, pay close attention to how you feel, because your feelings are a way of getting feedback about your level of vibration and your point of attraction. When you, are f you have a feeling, 
It is attracting the circumstances, the situations, the people that match that feeling. So this is why in, in the, in the um, video, The Secret, they show you, they show you a guy and he stubs his toe on the way to the bathroom in the morning. It ever happened to you? You know, get out of bed and you stub your toe and you say, Dad! And thereafter, everything seems to follow that same pattern for the day. You keep stubbing your toe. Not literally, but metaphorically. But if you heal it right away, I say, look at this, no, no. No, we only have nine. Anyway, we go in the bathroom. Anyhow, you change the energy, and in changing the energy, you begin to attract more of what you really want into your life. Um, you see, the belief system of a lot of people, the BS of so many people, is that when things get better, I'll be happy. When I have the new car, the new home, the new partner, you can't turn me like a new model for a new model, you know. <laughs> no, it's not like a car. But they say, when things get better, I'll be happy. But that's putting things back ways. It's things will get better when you generate the joy and when you generate the happiness and when you share it. So this is just something for us to remember. It's not waiting for something to happen to make you happy. It's being happy, reaching for that happy energy. And when you reach for the, that happy energy, you begin to attract the circumstances, the people, and the events that make you do, that match that um, emotion. And you know, I think it was Mark Twain who said, you know, he, he, he could find, he, could, he can teach anybody how to get what they want, but he can't find anybody who knows what they want. So if you want happiness, you really need to begin to think happy thoughts. Your thoughts, in fact, you can do a feeling check every now and then. Just stop and say, how am I feeling right now? Just have a look at your feelings. Do that right now, do it. Look at your feelings and see how are you feeling right now? Are you bored? Are you interested? Are you feeling happy? Are you feeling, um, what are you feeling right now? What you are feeling right now is an indication of what you are thinking right now. Some are saying, him can say anything, yo. Yeah? But through him, no, no. That's one thought. And so how does that make you feel? My friend Maxine Walters said she spent about three days trying to teach a, a, a world-famous actor how to kiss him teeth. You know, you know, it's a Jamaican thing. Or we are the only people that go, <laughs> Isn't that just wonderful? <laughs> so when anybody shares their BS with you, just go, a true you don't know, yeah? Or you might say, boy, that's some BS. I like that. That's a wonderful belief system. OK, so um, the mystical poet Torkan Sarah, uh, Saridarian said, and I quote, joy as the energy of love is the highest vibration on this planet. Joy as the energy of love is the highest vibration on this planet. Everything in the universe is energy. It can be measured and reduced to vibrational frequencies. It is a universal law that as we think and feel, we vibrate. And as we vibrate, we attract. When we are in high joy vibration, we attract what is for our greater good. End of that quote from Torkum Saridarian, which brings me to your assignment. Regulars here know that I always give an assignment. Your assignment, should you decide to undertake it, is to give your attention this week to what feels good for you. Focus on what feels good for you and make a note for yourself of the people and things that make you feel really good. And the other part of your assignment is on Tuesday, which is International Happiness Day. Call some of those people or text them or, um, you know, however you communicate with them and just say, thank you. You really are like a, a tonic for me. You make me feel good. You make me feel happy. And I want to thank you. And share something humorous or something, something um, joyful with them. Sometimes in the mornings when we are doing morning prayers at 10 o'clock in, in my office uh, and it's uh, Marshall's time to pray, 
After we pray, we have a moment of silence, and he will say, let us observe a moment of silence and think about something beautiful. Isn't that nice? What an assignment to get first thing of the day. Think about something beautiful, and let that be the, the pattern that you set for your day. So let us affirm together. If it feels good, I give it my full attention. Together. If it feels good, I give it my full attention. If it doesn't, I don't look at it at all. If it doesn't, I don't look at it at all. My belief system makes me feel good. My belief system makes me feel good. Ernest Holmes, the founder of this great teaching, um, the 100th anniversary of which we are celebrating this year, gave us this affirmation, and I love it. I'll say it once, and then you can say it with me. Everything necessary to the full and complete expression of the most boundless experience of joy is mine now. So I'm going to break it down for you, and you say it with me. Everything necessary, Everything necessary. to the full and complete expression of the most boundless experience of joy is mine now. Gimme. <laughs> to your neighbor say, your belief system is a blessing to your world. Your belief system is a blessing to your world. Your belief system is a blessing to your world. This week, seize every opportunity to laugh and to be happy. We all take ourselves and life far too seriously. So on Tuesday, join in celebrating International Day and come to our Tuesday evening spiritual enrichment service at 6 o'clock and spend 45 minutes uh, of joyous togetherness with us. You're invited. I got this one from Reverend Sharon Hudson, um, who is the new field leader for Centers for Spiritual Living, just elected in, in February. And she tells a story of an old rabbi who is walking in the dark of night. And of course, in his part of the country, there are no street lights. And so he's walking, and he's walking and praying, so he's not paying much attention to where he's going. And suddenly, he, he bucks up in a wall. And he's kind of startled. And he looks up, and way up in the darkness, he can see a flickering light. And it's in a turret. And there's a guard in there. And the guard looks down into the darkness and says to him, who are you, and what are you doing here? Silence. Who are you, and what are you doing here? Our friend, the rabbi, says, nothing. The third time, the God says, Who are you, and what are you doing here? The rabbi looks up and says, What do they pay you to, to do that? So the God says, huh, uh, 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 10 shillings a day. And the rabbi says, I'll double it. I'll give you 20 shillings a day if you'll pass by my house every morning and ask me those two questions. <laughs> and I ask you, my friends, who are you? Are you the joy that God created you to be? Are you generating the joy? And what are you doing here? And I don't mean here. I'm glad you're here in the temple. And I know what you're doing here hopefully listening to me, but what are you doing on the planet about spreading the joy, about being a light of love and happiness in the lives of the people you meet? And it's something that we have to do as a conscious decision because it is so, off, so easy just to shrug off people and, and things because they don't match our belief system when it would be so enriching if we could say, yes, so I've met this person and their belief system is different to mine, but maybe I can learn something from them and maybe they can learn something from me. Wouldn't it be just wonderful if we could weave a tapestry of joy throughout all of creation, which was based on our learning from each other, loving each other, sharing each other's differences. You don't have to embrace and like everything, but at least to, to be in the mode of here is another divine being experiencing their belief system and living from it. And you know, there is no way you can live other than by your belief system. It is the filter through which you experience everything.
You know, I know people who are physically very beautiful, and they have a mental construct that they're not very attractive. And so even a compliment makes them squirm, and they, they bat it away by saying, oh, sure. Not this whole thing, you know. Um, because it's their mental construct about who they are. And it's very powerful. I want us to be really careful about what we say to children and what we say to each other. Because children particularly take it on as a fact. If you say, you're too stupid. You're just like your papa. You don't have no sense. <laughs> Little children believe you and will make that the truth. You know, so, so it is, it's, I just heard a lovely story too. Um, I was watching, I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube for inspiration, and there was this teacher who got, she was a substitute teacher, and she got the dance class, the class of, you know, the slow learners, and what have you. And after the semester, they were getting very high marks, 80s and 90s, and some even um, full marks, 100. So the, the, head, the head, the principal called her and said, I, 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 I don't understand your, 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 what's happened with, with, with this class. She said, what do you mean? She said, I, I, I was just trying my best to, to give them what they deserve because when I saw their IQs on, their, on the form you gave me with their names, I thought, oh, wow, I have to really be on my, my P's and Q's and give them the most amazing lessons. He said, IQs? So she said, yes, look, here, it says John Scott, 145. He said, no, that's his locker number. <laughs> so you see, we draw out of people what we expect to find in them. It's as simple as that. Years ago, when I first came to this temple, there was a little old lady walking up Hopefield Avenue. And the story goes that, that she just got a sense. She was coming from the, from the shop, and she had two bags in her, you know, a bag in either hand, and her handbag over her shoulder. And there was a, 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 a young boy, young man, following her up Hopefield Avenue. And she just had this sense, you know, that she was being followed. So she stopped under the street light and said, come here, young man. So he walked up to her, and, and she said, I'm just going to the, the end of, Hope, of Hopefield Avenue. Can you um, carry these for me? And she handed him the two bags and turned her back and walked to her front door, opened her handbag, took out her key, pushed the door and said, put them on the dining table for me, son, while I find a, a, a kind to give you. He said, no problem, mother, no kind necessary. I, I do it. I do it for the love, and I do it for the money. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, no, that was in those days, they didn't have that song, but I couldn't resist it. <laughs> um, so he responded, whether his intentions were otherwise or not, she drew out of him the goodness that she saw. Uh, that's, that's, I mean, that's real psychology. I wonder how, how many of us would have, have the nerve to do that. And my other favorite story is about our, our blessed and beloved um, Howard Daly, uh, of blessed memory, who lived at the bottom of King Street um, and was at a rehearsal at the, at, the little, at the Ward Theater one night. And after the rehearsal, late, you know, 11 o'clock, 11.15, he was walking home and two boys held him up and took away his, his chain and his watch and his wallet. And so, the two of them are having a discussion about whether to you know, beat him up or whatever. And one is saying, no man, is, is our brother, because Howard had these little locks. And the other one is saying, no man, make we drop him. You know? And they had this debate. So eventually, the one who said, no man, leave him, prevailed on the other one. And they both started walking away. And Howard said, wait, 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 I want to say, I want to say something to you. Now, who in their right mind <laughs> has just been held up and it's big, the, the people, are, the whole lot of people are walking away and you call them back to have a tete-a-tete. -tete. And he said, I just want you to know that the things that you've taken from me, the ring and the chain and the, the wallet, are a gift because I don't want your youth them to eat from something that you have stolen tomorrow morning. The one that, that was saying, let, let us finish him off, said, we should have dropped him. And the other one said, no man, you know, he's a saint. Give him back him things. <laughs> And they gave Howard everything back, and he gave them a couple hundred dollars out of his wallet. Now, when you look for the good in people, 
you pull it out. It's as simple as that. It's, it's such a wonderful sermon um, in, in just loving your fellow human beings. Um, and I just thought we had, I'd, I would share those with you. So let me just see where I am because I digressed. Oh, here we go. Martin Luther is reputed to have said, if, and quote, if you are not allowed to laugh in heaven, I don't want to go there, unquote. And in a classic piece of writing, the late author Walter C. Lanyon included laughter in the divine identity. Lanyon, I want to just share a snippet of Lanyon's beautiful essay, which is titled, The Laughter of God. Quote, deep in my soul, I heard the laughter of God ringing in silvery cadences through the timbers of my being, breaking the human bonds and limitations as a strong yet gentle wind in the forest sweeps aside the strands of cobwebs. The hard, fast knots that I had tied slipped loose and the snarls of belief broke free. The river of my human life frozen by a thousand and one false ideas and teachings, broke joyously into expression and went bounding to the infinite sea of life to be lost and found at the same time. One dark cave after another was illuminated by the light of this laughter, and swampy areas of sick thoughts were dried up instantly, parched sands of hopelessness and futile efforts were drenched by the living waters, sucked in, absorbed instantly, like a wave breaking on the sands." End quote. My friends, we are a people of joy. We are created to be joyous. They said that the, the age of Aquarius is the age of joy. Jesus brought the age of love, and now the age of Aquarius is to reclaim the joy that is ours by divine right of being. So we come to the plane, this plane on a divine mission to emancipate the world from all discord of every nature with our vibrations of joy. Listen within you, and you will hear the God laughter in your soul and know that you have awakened to your spiritual magnificence. The ancient Egyptians saw joy as a sacred responsibility. They believed that upon their death, the god Osiris would ask them two questions. Did you find joy, and did you bring joy? Those who answered yes would be allowed to continue their journey into the afterlife. So laugh. Laugh often, laugh loud, and laugh long. I love that saying that we have in Jamaica, tekin teet and kiba heart bun. It means take those smiles and cover your aching heart, and soon the love and the laughter that is knocking at the door will find entrance into your consciousness and enfold you in its beauty, its peace, and its truth. So laugh and just dust off the debris from your belief system being assured that as you laugh and as we laugh together, the very foundations of erroneous belief shall crumble, and together we shall make the world a place that truly works for everyone. In the words of Lanyon, and I quote, I hear the laughter of God ringing in the deep recesses of your soul, you who read this page. I see the moving finger writing across all the worries and fears of a lifetime. The words, it does not matter. And I see this laughter writing the things of beauty over the walls of your temple and casting a glorious glistening white robe, a seamless robe of attainment over each of you. As it says in Isaiah 60 verse 1, arise, shine, for your light has come. You are the temple of the living God. You are the temple of light. Let us, the sons and daughters of God, shout for joy. It is wonderful. Shout with me. It is wonderful. Louder. It is wonderful. It is truly wonderful, and so are you. Namaste.